Your man, Andrew Thomas, wanted me to send you a message. He isn't perfect, but he's still a good guy. Remember the good times and the things like watching sister wives and eating snacks and that Andrew loves you. So here's an assignment to reflect on your relationship and see where it is that you need improvement. You must be vulnerable and you must communicate with honesty and kindness and see if you guys can't get this worked out. Hey everyone, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Thursday, March 16th, 2023. Are you guys as excited as I am for it to be spring? Anyone? Anyone out there? Okay. Uh, is anyone else eagerly waiting for sunny weather, warm weather, or if you're already having warm weather, are you over it? I don't know. I'm tired of the winter. It's February, it's March 16th and it's still snowing here. We've had snow like so much this winter. It's been gross. And this last few weeks, I have been diving into a rabbit hole of that is Vanderpump Rules. And I know a lot of you guys don't watch the show and it's a brand new topic for me. And I haven't even really discussed it on this channel in a full video because so many of you are here for the content related to cults and a lot of you have sent me messages expressly stating, Katie, stay in that niche because the other market is so oversaturated, to which I say, sure, I can do that, except some days there's not a lot to talk about, but today there is. Uh, but if you haven't watched Vanderpump Rules and you're just looking for something mindless and you know, arguing and drinks thrown and tables flipped, you know, kind of like housewives, you might like it. It kind of reminds me of like Jersey Shore slash uh, real world slash housewives slash I don't even know, right? Like it's all these, it's a bunch of adults that are not wanting to grow up. And the one thing I just have to put out there is that these guys that are in the scandal right now, one of them is 40, almost 41 years old. And I'm thinking these guys are like my age. And I think of how my life is so vastly different than them and how I would be so exhausted, so exhausted if I was the same age as I am today, living the life that they are. You can only live that kind of life for so long before it just becomes like a roller coaster of just repeat, repeat, repeat every day. And wouldn't you think at some point you would get tired of living that lifestyle and want more for yourself? Like that's how I end up getting sick of these shows. But then at the same time, the mindlessness is what keeps me invigorated. And then I'm like basically locked in my house because it's winter and I have 800 feet of snow. And so, you know, there's that part too. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hide your men, hide your boyfriends, hide your husbands because Raquel is after all of your men. And so that's what I learned last night on Vanderpump Rules. Anyways, uh, you can always check out Juicy Scoop. She talks, she actually talked to Lala Kent, one of the cast members in her podcast today, Heather McDonald, and they talked about last night's episode. So you can jump over there if you want more details. I just like to add the fodder here. But for this video, I wanted to talk to you about something that I saw on Radar Online, and it has to do with Robin and Cody's marriage and where she's feeling and how she's feeling now that she's the only wife, okay? It's tricky because Robin was on the tell-all, right? And she was so sassy. She was talking about how she's Cody's best customer. She treat or she treats Cody like he's her best customer. Uh, she shamed the women because she walked into the marriage and she saw stretch marks and she saw weight gain and she saw, you know, some of them had debt, i.e. Robin. Uh, and they, and Cody loved them anyways, which is really an insulting thing to say is like, oh, your husband will love you even if you get fat. Your husband will love you even if you get stretch marks. Like, how about you're just, your husband will love you without the even if. Uh, but that's what she's been groomed to think and say anyway. So Robin was, 
you know, I, I go back and forth here, you guys, because first of all, she has this conniving bone in her bone in her body where she did have a marriage. She definitely seemed to, based on everyone I've talked to, have an agenda and wanted fame and wanted more for her life. And she also believed in plural marriage and wanted to be a polygamist or she wanted to be a plural wife. Cody would actually be the polygamist here because she felt like her eternity was dependent upon it. So she scoops up Cody because she's got a shopping addiction and wants to be famous, allegedly, and thinks that this is going to be her ticket out of poverty and her ticket to a better life and her ticket into heaven, right? And she has not given up on that, right? So she still thinks that you have to have X amount of wives, apparently. Some of the family members are waking up from this and believing that it's a cult, right? So you've got Christine, who doesn't believe in Joseph Smith, calls him a creep, doesn't believe that in anything to do with the LDS faith or Mormonism at all or fundamentalism. And you have Cody's own brothers who have like this tiny, 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 small podcast called Brothers Random who, where they literally are on their podcast calling what they grew up in as a cult and saying that the way that they grew up in Wyoming was not normal and that they were very isolated from the, the community and they were uh, grew up very poor and that their dad was very abusive. So Cody's... Uh, father was not a great husband, not a great father. He was apparently both verbally and physically uh, horrible to his children. According to the two sons, uh, this would have been Michael and Cody's two youngest brothers, Travis, Michael and Travis, who are no longer in this faith. So there's a lot of family members waking up. And so you have to consider the fact that Cody has to be hearing these differing points of view. Not to mention there has been so much coming out from a letter, the CES letter that goes through all the different things that the, more, the LDS church has hidden from their history and questions about different, uh, in, in different discrepancies and myths, truths about Joseph Smith, his history, all these different lies that have been covered up. And there's all of these records that are proving that you know, Joseph Smith wasn't who he said he was or who these people believed that he was. And as the internet has taken hold of that, a lot of people are becoming what's called ex-Mormon. And you can go over to Mormon Stories podcast, which I absolutely love. Uh, they have amazing stories from people that have left the Mormon faith and those that have left polygamy. They talk about, you know, they talk about all ranges of Mormonism and that whole idea of being completely lied to, misled, and sort of swindled by a church that has made people believe that they have to tithe in order to go into the temple and you have to do these weird endowments in order to be a member. And it's, you know, it's an awakening, let's just say, a, a day of reckoning for the, the LDS church. And then you have this whole fraud thing that came out where it we, we learned about all these different shell companies and all these billions of dollars that the church had that they were hiding from members. There have been lawsuits by huge members for like fraud and saying that like you misled me and I, I donated like millions of dollars. It's, you know, it's been a kind of a mess. And so, as more and more people are coming out and more and more people are sharing their stories, uh, I get a lot of messages from people that are in the faith that want to tell me that I have it wrong. And to which I will just say like, I don't believe that Joseph Smith is a prophet. And I also don't believe in the book of Mormon. And I believe that he was a felon a criminal that was a treasure digger that made up and plagiarized his, his book of Mormon from his, the Bible, the King James version and made up names that were local to his area he, he, there were so many facts in the Book of Mormon that are just easily provable as either plagiarized or just flat out false that it doesn't stand up. It doesn't stand up to questions, which is why the church won't let people answer questions. And unfortunately, m missionaries will convert people and not tell them these things. So when someone tells me that I've got it wrong, I just have to remember that they don't necessarily either want to see the truth or they're being misled by church leaders. But all I can say to those of you that send me these messages is don't shoot the messenger. If you really want to learn more about sort of the discrepancies in this church, check out Mormon Stories podcast. These are people that were in the church that have nothing to gain from trying to help people, only help people leave. There you go. So this got me going on Robin. So Robin Brown is one of those faithful people that has basically been her whole life sucked into believing that she needs to be this plural wife and it's all just like a sham. And when she agreed to be a part of this family, it was 
her being groomed by Mary and Mary was the facilitator who basically was a lot of ways you could say trafficking women over to Cody because the goal of the wife was to bring him a new wife so that he can get to heaven, right? And the more the better. Three is the minimum and the doctrine and covenant that says that you have to have a minimum of three wives to get three wives to get into the celestial kingdom, okay? So four would be like, okay, we're really good. So Robin is misled. She's told this family is like really good. Everyone gets along except for they don't, right? And then obviously she's younger than all the wives. She's seven years younger than Christine. She's almost 10 years younger than Janelle and Mary. She's 11 years younger than Cody. So she's uh, ripe because she's 30. She can still have children. She can make more babies for Cody. And she has three kids that she can bring into Cody. So yes, she is brought in her own form of manipulation, but she's also being brought into a manipulative group that's doing this so that Cody can get into heaven. So when she agreed to join the family, as much as we say like she didn't choose this, she wanted to have a husband around, you know, every fourth night, and now she's got him every day. And apparently there's this new article that says that Robin is somehow mad about this because she wants Cody not to be around all the time. She's annoyed that she has been left and ditched by the wives because she didn't want to have Cody at her house every day. She wanted uh, freedom. And she has said so much on the show, like she wasn't prepared to have him at her house every day. She used to like to go to bed and have a book and not have to deal with him every single day, not have to deal with his moods. And so the article, which is posted by Radar Online, and again, take this for what it's worth, Okay, so this is saying that the family has imploded, which, listen, the family has already imploded. But anyways, they're saying that the departed spouses, Christine, Mary, and Janelle, are ganging up on his fourth wife, Robin, and the father of 18 is said to be livid that no one is giving him the respect that he deserves. <laughs> Cody, I mean, I don't know who this is because Radar put out a whole article like a month ago and said that they were gearing up to sue him and Thus far, no lawsuits have been filed. Their finances, y'all, are messy as F. Like, someone on my sent me a message, and they were like, Katie, everybody on Reddit is talking about this brand new uh, emergency homeowners uh, home equity loan that Cody and Robin took out. And I was like, can you go check? I go check the records. Oh, that was over a year ago. So no, that was like way before, like in 2021. So no, that's not happening. That's old. Or Katie, can you tell me, is, are Janelle and Mary still on the property? Yes. Are they still on these businesses with Cody? Yes. It's messy. And frankly, I don't know what they're going to do to separate all of this. It seems like they're still so connected to him uh, and so financially entangled with him that the only person, and, and really, J Christine is still financially entangled with them too because she is on a lot of these businesses. But Cody somehow thinks that he has control over them, so they're ganging up on Robin. I don't know how they would be ganging up on Robin and in what way they would be ganging up on her because they've already left. So if they're gone, what's there to gang up on Robin about? Like about how bad of a person Cody is? Are they trying to uh, talk with her and talk her through what a jerk he is? Are they trying to... Um, blame her like I don't really know what ganging up would mean because it seems like there wouldn't be a lot for them to fight about anymore truthfully other than it, like the financial side of things and we all know that Cody doesn't want to give up money he is desperately afraid of poverty and he doesn't want to ever go back to poverty that he had when he lived in Wyoming you know we've heard the stories of how he was bankrupt and he fled to from Wyoming to Utah because he was in foreclosure on their house and then he finagled Janelle to come back to him to buy him a house and he doesn't have these little, he doesn't have the puppet master strings that he used to where he can take people and be like, well, I need your finances, so I need a house. Uh, Janelle, can I get your bank account? Uh, so he has to figure out his life on his own, but I'm sure that's creating grief for him and Robin because they are dealing with a life that they weren't necessarily, I don't know, prepared for because they were already like grifting and using the women. And Robin had it perfect, you guys. Like, Robin walked into this family, and she never had to deal with the hardships that the family dealt with because when she met them, they joined the show, and she was, like, literally on the show immediately, right? 
that's when they walk into their wealth. And she's had a very cushy lifestyle. Robin goes from living in a trailer without electricity and having to do heat herself by putting wood in a wood burning stove to living in a 4,500 square foot home that's in the hills in Flagstaff and is worth almost $1.5 million. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to see how she's benefited from this. And so she hasn't had to go through the hard times that these other women have gone where they, they lived on nothing and they basically scraped by. Okay. She's scraped by previously to Cody, but she's never had to struggle. And now it's probably the first time she's actually having to go through struggles with him where he's not happy and he's upset and he's brooding and he's like irritated and he's, you know, ups and then she has no other outlet because he's always at home. Right. So this is what they say is that, you know, with everyone gone, Cody's just like at home crabby as hell. So this is what the insider says to Radar. Cody wants everyone to get along and treat him like the head of the household, as they used to. But Christine, Mary, and Janelle have no intention of giving into his petty patriarchal fantasies. Once you divorce a man, you have zero responsibility to like have any respect for them or even treat them like a patriarch. And then this idea that like in 2023, any woman should have to be forced to believe in the patriarchy or treat a man with patriarchal, patriarchal power is just asinine. But he still wants them to treat him like a head of the household, even after they've left. And if that's true, Cody's just proving to us that he's not mentally stable or delusional because, or a narcissist, because why would someone treat you above them when you have no control over them? But then this is what they say about Robin. Robin is mad at them for taking off and leaving her to deal with Cody and his moods all by herself. It also pisses her off to see these women enjoying dates. Okay, wait a minute. She's mad at them for taking off and leaving her to deal with Cody and all of his moods by herself. There's no one forcing Robin to stay married to him. So if this is true, literally nobody is forcing Robin to stay married to Cody. No one's forcing her to like stay in an abuse. And this to me sounds like moods as though he's an abuser. And we already know that he kind of is. You can't tell me that at some point the mask is going to fall off between them, right? Like they could pr play pretend because they lived in a honeymoon, right? So if he was going around from house to house to house, and I talked to someone from the AUB about this, and I said, you know, once all the wives leave and there's only one li wife left, would that other wife be happy that she finally got him alone? And they said maybe, but they may also feel like overwhelmed because it's one, not what they're used to, and two if they've lived in a perpetual state of honeymoon, like they had, because they never had a lot of time together. So it was always like the anticipation of seeing each other. And if that anticipation is gone and the chase is gone and you're together all the time, the honeymoon wears off and then the mask slips off and you see each other for who they are. And at that point, Cody can only pretend he's something for so long. He can't pretend anymore. And if Robin is as emotional and as empathetic and as and uh, a feeler as much as she says she is it's gonna be hard on her to deal with that right but so Cody will probably just buy her things to keep her happy but then it's weird to see it pisses her off to see these women enjoying dates the only woman I've seen enjoying dates is Christine as far as I know I haven't seen a single photograph of Janelle going on a date I haven't seen a single photograph of Mary going on a date. I mean, literally Mary has a friend and they think it's a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And by the way, Mary is not gay. She's said as much that she is a heterosexual because every time Mary shares a picture of herself, people want to speculate on her sexuality. So I haven't seen any women going out on dates other than she's still bitter at Christine for leaving. And let me just say this is that I think that in terms of the physical intimacy that Cody had, I think that even though he and Christine didn't have it a lot, I think she was probably the only one outside of Robin that he had any sort of physical intimacy with. And so she might be stuck with having to do all the things that are weird that he wants to do, or she might be bitter that she's been stuck with him all the time and Christine ran off and she's stuck with him all the time. I mean... To me, that doesn't even make sense. Like, why would you be mad at them for going on dates when literally the only one that has a boyfriend is Christine? 
And Christine and David share really sweet posts to each other. And, you know, people are divided on whether or not they think that this is real or if, if this is for show and if Christine really does love this guy and if he's the real deal. I don't know. But I could see Robin being upset that they left and she's left with the mess. But I could also see her feeling relieved that she doesn't have to compete anymore. But I also think the chase... Once the chase is gone and once your entire relationship is built on all of these people and pinning each other against each other and the thrill of winning, and then once you win, like the allure is gone and the mask slips. So Cody still wants everyone to obey and submit to him and now it's all going to be about Robin. So this is what it tells me is that either Robin's going to force a, another wife so that she doesn't have to deal with him all the time or she's going to bolt. I'm split on this, you guys. I think she actually could end up divorcing him a spe um, at some point because Cody's not a peach. And I'm assuming that he's, even if he loves Robin, he's, narcissists don't love anyone but themselves. They're exhausting. They're like, they're energy suckers. They're life suckers. And you can't tell me that even if you guys say that Robin's always a sob and Robin and there's never tears, if someone was truly that happy, would they cry as much as she does? No. So I don't think she's as happy. I don't think she's as happy as people think she is. I think she's miserable and she's found a way to enjoy it by letting Cody fuel her shopping addiction. But beyond that, I could see her leaving Cody or else forcing him to take another wife. What do you think the option is? And do you think she's still mad at Christine? And are they telling us that someone else is dating? And if so, which one of them would be dating? Tell me in the comments below. Bye, guys.